Our Heavenly Father, how we need the sprinkling of the blood drops on the lintel of our hearts. How today I pray that no plagues will come nigh our dwelling. For when it sees the blood, it will pass over us. I pray today you will help us to soar beyond the corona. And I pray you will encourage us in our walk so that one of these days of the camp meeting in the promised land, we will be there. Amen. For in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will again turn the word with me to the 32nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, I'd like to share three things with you from the passage on the consideration. Deuteronomy 32, beginning at verse 10. He found him in a desert land and in the wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. And now to verse 11. As an eagle stirs up its nest, Hoovers over its young, spreading out his wings, taking them up, carrying them on his wings. So the Lord alone led him, and there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride in the heights of the earth that he might eat the produce of the field. He made him draw honey from the rock and oil from the flinty stone. And the people of God say, Amen. Amen. If you are a chicken, this message is not for you today. Chickens quit. But I'm going to speak to eagles today. I'm going to speak to eagles today. Any eagles in the house? Look back over 40 years in the wilderness. And Moses checked the metaphor of an eagle and her eaglets to fly as an illustration of God's providential guidance to his people. God has always been good to his people. Amen. The Lord gave him through this metaphor a message to show humanity that we serve a God of power, a God of might, a God of provision, a God of protection over his people. We don't worship foreign gods. We worship Jehovah God. Amen. 
Exodus 19 verse 4 says, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians? Talking to Moses. How I bore you up an eagle's wings and brought you to myself. So the message this morning is on eagle's wings. And here is Brother Moses in the twilight zone of his life. And he knows fully well eagles' activities, their strength, their power. And if eagles can do what they do for their eaglets, God can do for us exceedingly, abundantly, beyond that which we can even conceive. So Moses paints the picture about an eagle, one of the most powerful birds in the year, in the year. Eagles. No wonder the founding fathers of this great nation use an eagle as a symbol of her strength. You've heard what God has done for us. He lifted us up on eagle's wings. And Moses says, as an eagle stirs up the nest, hover over its young, spread its wings, taking them up, <coughs> carrying them on his wings. So the Lord alone has led us, and the Lord alone has carried us. There are three things from the passage that I would like to highlight this morning and then I send you home. Number one, God is a disturber. Did somebody hear what I just said? God is a disturber. Who knoweth whether Corona COVID-19 has not come to disturb us. God is a disturber. He comforts the disturbed and sometimes he disturbs the comfortable. He disturbs us because he loves us. He disturbs us because we are too comfortable in our sins. And he wants to get our attention. My greatest fear today is not whether I will get COVID-19 or not. My greatest fear today is whether we are listening to what God is saying to us. That man is not in charge. Presidents are not in charge. Prime ministers are not in charge. God is in charge and he has promised his children that he will build a hedge around us and no evil will come nigh our dwelling. I'm claiming that. So while the world is frenzied and fearful, I am faithful believing that God is able to deliver no vitamin C and no bush medicine and no conventional or unconventional medicine is going to help us in this moment it is going to take the power of the divine obviously Mr. Trump doesn't know what to do Obviously, the health care community don't know what to do. But I know my God knows what to do. And he has promised he will carry me on eagle's wings. He wants to get our attention. Ever before our inception and even the inception of our conception, God had a master plan on our lives because he loves us. 
even when we're not in love with him, he's in love with us. Did you hear me? God loves us to the extent that he laid down his life for us. What a love. Jeremiah calls it everlasting love. Everlasting love is a love that lasts forever. He loves us and will never stop loving us. And he used the figure of speech to tell us, to tell us how much he loves us. He talks about Mother Eagle. How she loves her eaglet even before they are hatched. She takes pains to make preparation for them. Hmm? She builds their nest that when they come along, they have an address. Hmm? Mother Eagle prepared for her young. She makes sure to go out and she gets the choicest material. She, she chooses a strong branch, one that can hold up the weight. Then she tests it. And listen, when she tests the branch and the branch passed the building code, she starts to populate it. She would get some vine and hitch them around the limb to help fortify them. Then, then, then she get leaves to line the nest. And then she get feathers to line it for comfort. And when the babies come along, they are in a sturdy, comfortable nest prepared by a loving mother. God says, I'm like that. And if Mother Eagle can go through that for he, her eaglets, imagine what I go through for you. But picture it. When the eagles come along, there's no need for them to worry. They just lay there in their posturepedic nests. They are there in comfort. They are fed. Three times a day, those eagles get nutritional belly fulling food from mom that is brought in by dad. I wish I had time to explore that from a family life perspective that we don't have children without preparation. And the preparation must be both from mom and dad. Mom procreate, but dad knows that he must take care of the family. And all those baby eaglets do is to open their mouths and with precision and regularity and timeliness, they are fed. Do you see God in the picture? The mother feeds them. They eat. Then they burp. Then they roll over on their back. And they nap again until mealtime. But in the passage read, there comes a time when baby eagle must learn to fly. They are not programmed to sleep all their life through like some Americans. They are not dependent on welfare like some Americans. They have got to learn to earn to live. They are not chickens. They are eagles. I reared chickens when I was growing up. Chicken is content to walk around, scratch around in the yard. And now and again they might fly, but the only thing that propels chicken to fly is if they're attacked by a predator. And I tell you this, the highest I've ever seen a chicken fly is the roost. <laughs> and when they do try to fly, they can't go far. But not so with eagles. 
An eagle is made not only to fly, but to fly high. An eagle is made to soar. The eagle is made to spread its wings. And I want to tell you this morning, you will never know how high you can fly. You will never know how long you can fly you, unless you fly. You've got to learn to soar and mount up with wings like an eagle. A lot of people have chicken mentality. They just make the rounds eating worms. Just living a routine. Scratching, looking for worms. Some people won't even fly to church. You know, out of abundance of caution. Some people are not here today. But some people are glad for the opportunity not to be here. They pray for it. Not to be here. Some people don't fly to church. Some people fly away from church. But there comes a time when Mama Eagle will stir up the nest. Will make it uncomfortable for them to lay in it anymore. And some of you have children at home. You got to learn how to stir up the nest. Uh-huh. Some of them are in your nest too long. You got to learn to stir up the nest. You're feeding some of them too long. It's time for you to stir up the nest. Make it uncomfortable for them to laze around. To let them know life is not all about hands out. Life is not about sleeping. Life is not all about being catered to. Life is about soaring. Becoming aware that it's time to get up and get your wings activated. Get flapping. I have been taught, when you understand being around a health professional, I learn a few things and can practice medicine without license. That I learned, I learned that if you are inactive and you don't use up your parts, they are going to become atrophy. That's why when people are sick in the hospital nurse, they turn them and they move them and they give them physical therapy and they exercise them because if body parts are not used, they are going to become atrophy and if those eaglets don't use their wings, they are going to lose their wind. So the mother hen stirs up the nest, push them around in the nest. Then she pushed them out of the nest. Yeah. Sometimes you have to motivate. And when they don't respond, you have to activate. Mama shows them a few things. She shows them a few flaps. It's always good for children to learn through modeling. Don't expect them to do what you don't show them to do. Don't tell them to go to church when you don't come to church. Don't tell them to live for Jesus when you are living carelessly. You've got to learn to model, to educate, to edify, to entertain, so that they can learn to wing it on their own and move on. The eagle does that for the eaglet. She gives them a lesson in self-start program so they can learn how to do it for themselves if only they will try so mama pushes and she flies around and if they don't respond she pushes again and if they don't respond she takes her wings and I understand a good eagle mama eagle has a wing with a wind span of up to 10 feet and the wings are very powerful. And she will go over the nest and take the wing and hit the nest and destroy the nest so that they have nowhere 
to be complacent. So they have to develop compliance and cooperation and confidence and faith that works and works with faith. You know, sometimes God will push us from our nest, from our comfort zone. Sometimes God will move the comfort from under us that we will begin to fall towards the ground. Sometimes God has to put us on our knees for us to learn to pray. Sometimes God has to put heavy weight on our head for us to learn to kneel. Sometimes God has to put us on our back for us to look up. Sometimes God has to blind us for us to see and dumb us for us to speak less. But God will disturb us for our own good. So Mama Eagle pushes the eaglet out of the nest and when they are falling and they discover that they are going down, then they will begin to lift up their wings and sometimes they struggle for strength. They fall and they flip and they fly and while all this chaos is going around, Mother Eagle is hoovering over them like a fighter jet because Mama wants to ensure that her babies do not get in danger that they cannot manage. And just in case their little strength begins to wane and they keep flying, Mama Eagle swoops down, spreads out her wings and let them land on them. And then she bears them back up. Bring them to higher ground and drops them again. That's for their development. Give them time to develop their wings. And after they have struggled and struggled and the struggle is over. Now they would have learned to fly. They would have learned to soar. They would have learned to rise. Fly, fly, fly like an eagle. With wings beneath your wings. You must get to the point where you learn to fly effortlessly. You must get to the point where you stop flapping and start gliding. Because God's desire for you is that you not be a chicken, but you be an eagle. Amen. And after a while, when the target is achieved... After they have endured their frustration and their struggles and their trials and their torment. After they have learned to master the jet streams and the fierce winds. He promised them that he will bear us up on eagle's wings. He will disturb you. But he will deliver you. He will disturb you. But he will develop you. God says that I will bear you up on eagles' wings. Some fantastic things about eagles. They see best in the dark. In your darkest hour, they can see your prey from afar. Just like your heavenly father in your darkest hour when the praise are coming up on you. When the imps of hell would want to ravish you. God says I will bear you up on wings like an eagle. Mother eagle never allows one to fall to destruction. Neither will God allow any of us. To fall to destruction. Amen. Your heavenly father promised. I'll never leave you. Nor forsake you. He says I'll never let one of my children fall to the ground. He said I will allow you to. I will not always allow you to be in your comfort zone. Perched in your nest. When he wants you to soar. He will not let you fall and hit the jagged rocks of life. When you try, he will not make you fail. 
and he will not make you fall to death. He will catch you. And guess what he says? I will make you ride upon the high places of the earth. And I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. In other words, you can swear on it. You can bet on it. You can buy a ticket on it. And you can buy it on Quinella. If you don't know what that means, ask those who buy a resource. <laughs> the Lord will deliver you. Yes, he will. But you will have to exercise faith and not fear. An eagle will never fly if that eagle is fearful. But if that eagle is faithful, that eagle will soar. He'll deliver you. Faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, but receives the impossible. You need faith like an eagle. If you'll only do what he tells you to do, trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to do what? Trust and obey. God in the faith has already given you. He will increase your faith even when you are on the journey. Your journey in life may have gales, gale force winds that will rip your wings. But when you get to the end of your journey, you'll be able to say it was worth it all because now I can fly. Just do the best you can as the Lord gives you strength and he will increase it as you try. Then when he's satisfied with your flight pattern, he says, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to drop you. I'm not going to let you fall. He will develop you. And then after he develops you, he will deliver you. When Moses was true talking about our provident God, he gave a doxology, a, a, a benediction, an affirmation of faith. Moses said, there is no God like the God of Israel. He rides in the heavens to help you. He is in the skies of his majesty. He is the eternal God. He has a dwelling place for all those who will dwell under the shadow of the Almighty. He's our dwelling place in all generations. He's our dwelling place and under his everlasting arms is our salvation. Everything that God gives you, everything that God gives me, everything that God gives us, not only lasts forever, but is everlasting. God has a home for us. God has a hope for us. God has prepared life for us. For he is our dwelling place in all generation. He is our eternal God. And, and, and Moses was so obsessed with the providence of God. The provisions of God. That he cried out in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. I wish I could hear somebody bless the Lord today. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. Who give all your, who forgives all your iniquities. What a God. Who heals all your disease that include Corona. Who redeems your life from destruction. That includes you. Because some of you were destined for destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness. And tender mercies. New every morning is his love. Who satisfy your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagle. What a God. And Jude picked up the strain in Jude 24 and said, Now unto him that is able 
to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. And he said to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forevermore. And Isaiah picked up the strain as he looked at the, 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 the figure of speech used in the passage. Isaiah says in chapter 40 and verse 31, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. I have come by this morning to tell you that deliverance is not only near, but deliverance is here. Here if we'll trust him. Here if we'll keep flying. Because God has made it possible for us to soar like eagles. And I hope when you leave here today, you will remember that now I can fly. So leave church today and go home flying like an eagle. Because the eternal God is still your strength. And under his wings, you can safely abide.